Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video showing how you set up things like the trainer function on your radio, but also how you can set up things like a head tracker or something else on your radio as well. Now, the reason for this video is this gentleman here, Riz Hassan, asked this question. He was obviously struggling with this. And the process in Edge TX, as I'm gonna show you, is exactly the same as in its parent OpenTX. So there's no real differences, but it's worthwhile going through this. However, I suspect that some of the problems that Riz is encountering is due to a common problem that can occur on the TX16S, specifically the three and a half millimeter jack at the top that's labeled DSC, that can have problems. I've made a video on how you can repair that so that it works okay. I'll put a link down to that below. But having the ability to have two radios connected incredibly useful if you're teaching somebody else to fly you can kind of give them control of the model and when they get into trouble take back the control and i taught lots of people to fly using that exact same method but also by having that you can then attach things like a head tracker so as you are doing fpv and you're moving the goggles around there's a little servo pan and tilt setup i'll put a link down to my design for a pan and tilt 3D printable setup with use a couple of servos and basically you can look around on the model as well and it's pretty cool stuff. And thanks to Riz for suggesting this as a video. So here on the bench I have two radios and we're going to connect them via this little stereo cable. This cable here is a little three and a half millimeter stereo cable. It has the same end on each end and one side is going into the top of this radio here. This is the Radio Master Boxer and the other end is going to be plugged into this thing here, the T x16s now i'm setting it up so this would be the master radio and this is the slave so this is the radio that you'd use if you were the person doing the teaching or the main pilot and this is the one that you would have the auxiliary controls on or the student and you could pass control of specific pieces over to this radio so this is a great way to teach people to fly i use it an awful lot but also as i said in the introduction it's kind of handy for extra things as well so for example it might be that this pilot's doing the flying and this pilot might be controlling the camera gimbal to point in a very specific direction so let me plug in the cable and show you how that works so here on the top of the ts16s we have the port so let's plug that in and immediately we start to see some slightly different things on the screen now as it is at the moment, the main four controls of this radio control channels one, two, three, four here. So that's how it's all working. However, if I flick the switch to activate the trainer, those four channels on that radio are now controlled by this radio here. Isn't that cool? Now, the other thing we can do here as well, we can also do some cool stuff. For example, I've just given where maybe this is controlling a gimbal or something on the model. The main four flight controls can be handled by this, but it might be that the gimbal, see those extra two channels moving, is controlled by this. So how have I set that up? Well, the first thing we need to do is go into the model on the main radio and go down into the trainer section and set this radio to be master jack. Once we've done that, then we need to go into this other radio that's going to be the student. We need to then page across, go down to the bottom, and we need to set it as slave jack. And that means that it's going to use the jack rather than any wireless or anything else. And it's going to output the signals over the wire into the other radio. That is literally all you have to do on this smaller radio. What I would recommend though is that you do try and match the channel order on the two radios. It isn't absolutely required. Uh, AETR is how they're both set up. If it's that way, then that works really easily. But let me zoom in a little bit closer on this radio because there's a bit more stuff to do on here to get it set up. So on this radio, the extra things we need to do, we need to go into the special functions. And what we need to do is we need to set up the trainer function to be on a specific switch. And we need to make sure it's enabled as well. And that means that when I flick that switch, this goes yellow and that is the trainer stuff that's turned on. That means that then the signals coming in from the student radio are going to override the signals on this radio. And you've got to basically pass control and putting it on a switch allows you to turn it on and off. 
that's how you control it. For newer pilots, I tend not to use a three position switch. I'll use the spring loaded switch. And that means while I have the spring loaded switch pulled up, then the student pilot has control. And that means as soon as they get into trouble, as soon as I take my finger off that spring loaded switch, it snaps back and then they, I'm back in control and I can rescue it. Other thing we need to do then is if we go into the system, then if we go across, there's actually a trainer set up in here. Now this is where if the channel order isn't the same on both radios, and maybe you're using a radio like a Spectrum or something that has a different order, you can use this screen then to select which order is which. So which is the aileron channel, which is the elevator, throttle and rudder channel. And you can also do a calibration function in here and have a multiplier if the radio isn't moving, student radio isn't moving enough. And this is a great way to do it. You can even change the amount of those signals that come in. There is one last trick that I'll talk about. So we, when we first looked at this, we saw that the first four controls, throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, were actually being passed across. You can decide on a channel by channel basis how you want this to work. So let me show you what I've done. Let's come out of that, go into the model menu and zoom across into the mixes. I have added on channels 10, 11 and 12, this stuff here. Now, the source is TR1. TR1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 will only appear on the radio once you set it up as something like the master in the settings that we've just looked at. But this is the trainer radios channel 1, trainer radio channel 2, etc. And you can just assign them like you would any other input as normal. The thing about this is that these don't need that trainer function turned on. They're kind of always there. So if I come out of here, we can see that even though I haven't got the trainer function turned on, I still can move channels 10 and 11. They're the trainer one and trainer two ports, the ailer on the elevator. So I could control something like a gimbal. So that's the tips and tricks. If you're going to set up something like a trainer radio to help a buddy or to maybe control more things on a complicated model. And using the same method, we can do the same with a head tracker, whether it's something like the Trinity head tracker that's installed here inside these Fat Shark goggles, or it's something like this little 3D printed DIY version that you can make and stick on the side of the goggles. You can make one of these for less than about $30, 30 pounds. They're pretty easy to do now. Now, what we're gonna do is, let's just show you how this works. Again, we've got the trainer cable from the goggles plugged into the top of the radio. I'm going to power the goggles and then I'm going to turn on. I'm going to show you how it works. Now the radio just said trainer signal recovered and we can see on channel 10, 11 and 12 we have a signal. Let me turn on the head tracker and now you can see that the head tracker is appearing here on the radio. So as I pan around channel 10 is moving so I would connect that to the pan servo on a pan and tilt setup. Similarly with pitch, that's channel 11 and your is channel 12. Now, let me zoom in, show you how I've got that set up. The trick here is you need to know which PPM channels the head tracker is sending the information in and you can just set it up like this. So what we've done here, we quickly go into the model and we zoom across into the mixes. All I've done is I have on channel 10, 11, and 12, set them up for TR5, TR6, and TR7, which are the default channels that are output by the Trinity head tracker, but check for the documentation for the head tracker that you're using. And by setting that up, it means that whenever um, I kind of move the head tracker, I automatically get those kind of things coming through. So that is how you set up both a student radio uh, or some kind of auxiliary radio to control extra things via a separate pilot and also something like a head tracker on Edge TX. Don't forget, the key thing is there can be issues with this connector here on the top of the radio. So if you can't get it to work, I would check out the other video I linked to below that I talked about in the introduction.
Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.